Hello and welcome back to Power Electronics. In this set of videos, we are going to look at DC to AC inverters. This first video is going to be an introduction. But before going in the introduction, let me explain why it's important to study DC to AC inverters or to the ability to have an AC source from DC. One example is a photovoltaic panel. Photovoltaic panels create energy produced by the sun and produce a DC output voltage and current. We can take that energy and convert it to a sinusoidal power signal that allows us to drive and power our, our houses and buildings either at 60 hertz or 50 hertz. Another key example is electric motor. For example, synchronous motors rotate at a rate that is proportional to the AC sinusoidal voltage that is powering them. We can then create different frequencies of AC and drive machines at a different angular rate of rotation. Two, two examples and there are more. Let's go on to the introduction. In this video, we're going to look at two types of DC to AC inverters. The first type or the first class of inverters is going to is called commutation based. In commutation based inverters, switching occurs at the same frequency as the sinusoid we are trying to create. The other class of inverters are PWM based. In PWM based inverters, we switch at a frequency that is much greater than the sinusoid. And there's reasons for doing this. The main reason is it can lower the total harmonic distortion of the waveform we produce. I'm going to provide two references in the description down below. The first, rep reference, the first reference is Power Electronics Commonly Used Power and Converter Equations by Daniel Hart, and I provide the link. The other reference is an application note from Texas Instruments titled 800VA Pure Sine Wave Inverter Reference Design. Both are excellent sources of information. Specifically in the Daniel Hart reference, please see chapter eight. Here we show a H bridge that is connected with a load between it. And, we, and we've seen before, we can create an AC signal with an H bridge. For example, if we switch M1 on and M3, the voltage across the load V out is equal to plus VDC, our DC supply voltage. If we switch M2 and M4 on, then our output voltage is equal to minus VDC, and we have reversed the polarity of the voltage across our load. If we do this at a rate that is equal to our sinusoidal frequency, we can produce an output that's a square wave. For example, we show a, a sinusoidal wave, and if you notice on our sinusoidal wave, our peak amplitude is a square root of two. I have this sinusoidal wave normalized to one volt RMS. The other thing to note is I'm plotting it with what's called our conduction angle, which is 360 degrees for one full cycle. It's easy to convert our conduction angle into the frequency of operation. Now let's look at what happens when we use the H bridge. You'll see in our output, again, I'm normalized to one. And we'll keep, it, we'll keep the M1 and M3 switches on for a half a cycle. And then we'll reverse the polarity across the load for the other half of the cycle. And in here, we're using all 360 degrees with the first uh, 180 degrees of forward conduction and then the second 180 to 360 degrees of reverse conduction. And the other thing you'll notice here, our RMS voltage is equal to one, it's normalized, and it is the same output as our DC voltage. So we can normalize accordingly. One of the downsides to this type of waveform is it has a total harmonic distortion that's approximately 46%. That's fairly high. And in a future video, we're going to review the Fourier series and show where that comes from. 
we can modify this wave and create what's called a modified sine wave. In a modified sine wave, we start conduction after some angle alpha. And then we end alpha right before 180 degrees. And then we come down again and up. So this time period has an angle of two alpha and we start the conduction and alpha into the zero crossing. This is called a modified sine wave. The advantage to modified sine wave, it has a total harmonic distortion that is lower than a full uh, square wave. And in a full square wave, our alpha is equal to zero degrees. And here I'm showing alpha approximately equal to about 23 degrees. And 22 and a half is where we optimize the total harmonic distortion. However, we do have to increase our amplitude to normalize and obtain a normalized RMS voltage of one. It's going to be slightly higher than one. And this is called a modified sine wave. In those past two examples, we were using an H bridge to reverse the polarity across the load. We can also use a half bridge with a center tap transformer. Assuming we have a conduction angle alpha equal to zero degrees where we start the pulse right at zero and finish right at 180 degrees. And also if we assume that we have a one for one winding on our transformer, we would see an output that looked like this. The other advantage to using a transformer is it provides isolation. If our DC voltage is extremely high, there are times where we want to be isolated from the DC side or the DC power supply, and we can obtain that with isolation. We're also going to use this half bridge configuration in later sections when we investigate what are called resonant converters. Finally, we can create three phase power or three phase AC power from DC using three half bridges wired in this configuration. And here I show a Y connected load. The the last examples were examples of commutation-based inverters where the switching frequency was at the same rate as the sinusoid we were trying to create. This class of, in of inverters is called PWM. And here we PWM the switches in a rate that is proportional to the value of the sinusoid. Therefore, our switching frequency must be greater than than the frequency of the sinusoid we are trying to create. For example, in this first conduction from zero to 180, we close M3 and PWM M1 accordingly. Then between 180 and 360 degrees of conduction, we open up M1 and M3. And close M4 and PWM M2.
at a rate that's proportional to the voltage of the sinusoidal signal in the lower half. And here's another example of a PWM-based signal. This one uses a half bridge, and we show a triangular-shaped waveform, and this waveform is used to compare against our reference sinusoid to create our PWM signal. And our PWM signal then is used to switch M1 and M2 for this half bridge. So let's review the key points in this intro video. First, we looked at commutation style uh, DC to AC inverters and PWM based DC to AC inverters. In the commutation based inverters, the switching frequency was equal to the sinusoidal frequency that we were creating. In PWM-based inverters, we switch at a rate that is higher than the AC signal we are trying to create. One of the things we also talked about was the harmonic content in these signals, which we're going to investigate in future videos. All these inverter systems create additional higher order harmonics and oftentimes the harmonics do not add value to driving machinery. And, some, and we'll look then at the total harmonic distortion associated with the waveforms we are creating. The PWM converters typically have lower total harmonic distortions and approach a pure sinusoidal wave. In the next video, we're going to review the Fourier series and show how to compute the total harmonic distortion for the square wave and the modified sine wave type inverters. Thanks for watching.